My name is Penny and I love to cook. Today is Sunday, so I'm making Sunday dinner. So let me show you what we're cooking. Beef ribs made in the Instant Pot with beer and Dr. Pepper. Kraft barbecue sauce that I doctored up with Dr. Pepper. My bomb mac and cheese. I make a cheese sauce. I also add shaved cheese into grated cheese into the mix before I bake it. Collard greens with smoked turkey legs and a little bit of butter and a little bit of grapeseed oil and some delicious seasonings. My mama's potato salad that I've made from memory that she used to make when I was young with smoked paprika, egg, celery, onion. Sunday dinner is ready. Start off, we're going to be making, well, I'm going to be making some collard greens. A few different bunches. Some of these are organic. Some I got from another store that are just regular. We're also doing um, Instant Pot beef ribs. So I have these beef chuck riblets. They were $2.94 a pound. And I got three packs of those. And then from Harris Teeter, I got four packs of the beef ribs. And these were $5.99 a pound. So it's going to be enough beef ribs for everybody. And then I'm also making potato salad, so I got potatoes, onion, celery, and not pictures. I'm also making macaroni and cheese. So let's get to cooking. I'm gonna get over to clean the back of our ribs. What we're going to do is take our knife. You can use a paring knife or a steak knife. Um, for this rib, I just needed something sharp, so that's why I'm using this. Otherwise, if it's easier, like pork ribs, then you can use a butter knife. That wasn't doing the job for this. So you just stick your knife underneath um, the membrane above the bone and wiggle the knife to cut it and lift the membrane. So once the membrane is lifted, then you can take a kitchen towel or a paper towel and just grab it with your hands and pull it. And these beef ribs have tough membranes, which you can see it's pulling away. Can you imagine chewing on that? Ways that you can season your meat. I'm just showing you one way today. I'll probably show you another way another time. So mustard, um, our dry rub stick. And we're going to add the rub to both sides. You can smell that smoky mesquite. So now that the ribs are marinated, I'm gonna go ahead and let them uh, put the plastic on and let them marinate. I have my macaroni that is cooking for my uh, macaroni and cheese. I have my potatoes on for my potato salad boiling. I have about five pounds. I don't measure anything. I never use a recipe for my potato salad. So I don't have exact measurements. You'll just see the measurements I use for a five pound bag of potatoes. I just make it the same way my mother did when I was little. And then I have my smoked turkey when cooking. So I need to go ahead and get my collard greens on because my greens cook for a few hours. And it's one o'clock and so we need to have dinner in about four hours. So yep, let's get going. So wash my hands and put the meat in the fridge and I'll be. Okay, so now it's time for the collard greens. I've already um, cut up a couple of bunches. So um, these are organic collard greens because that's what the store had that I like. So to weigh the clean the collard greens, first of all, find somebody else to do it if you can. But since I'm the only one cooking today, it's up to me. So what I like to do is take a few leaves, two or three or four. And the first thing I do is I cut off the stems. It's thick and fibrous, so it's not pleasant to eat but it is perfect to juice in a juicer. So that's what I'm gonna do with these ends. So I'm just gonna cut them off and place them in my juicing bowl to have me some fresh green juice tomorrow. And so with my cut leaves, what I do is I take three or four or five and I stack them on top of each other, try to get the stems kind of right on top of each other. So then I can just start ripping from the base, ripping the greens from each side because I don't want the thick stem that's still on here, but the stem that's closer to the top tends to be really small. So I don't mind eating that at all. I made a rhyme. So I just do that with my whole bunch before I start cutting them. It's tedious, but it's worth it. Oh, I have too many. It's worth it once you get to eat the final product.
people cut their collard greens in different ways. Some people like the big chunky squares, like really big. Um, some people like a very small, tight chiffonade with no stems in it. Some people like all the stems. It just depends. Cook what your family likes. Cook how you like it. If someone doesn't like it, they don't have to eat it, right? But um, I think this is the most balanced way. It's a little bit of stems to give it some heft in the final dish. It's not just leaves, but it's nothing heavy or hard to chew through. Just a little time consuming. You can also buy collard greens already cut and de-stemmed in the bag, which they had those at the store, but the fresh ones look better. So I just buy what looks better, what has the better sale. And I don't mind if I leave a little bit of leaves on the stems that I discard because I'm juicing this, so it won't go to waste. The stems and the leaves can be juiced in a juicer for a cold press veggie juice. Greens taste delicious um, after a day or two in the refrigerator, so you can certainly make your greens the night before, and they'll still be delicious. So I'm going to work with a smaller amount. So when I have my cut greens, I like to try to bunch them up together, and then the long way, the long leaf way, I cut three or four or five cuts the long way, then I bunch them up again, and I cut the short way. Now, I'm not obsessive about making my collard green cuts completely even. They're not exactly the same size, oh well. They're gonna cook down anyway. I just try to get them all smallish, and then I cut through a couple more chops so the pieces aren't too big. But as I'm transferring it to my bowl, if I see a piece like this that's kind of long, then I'll just break it with my hands. So remember, these haven't been cleaned yet, so I'm just cutting them and ripping them so that I can place them in the bowl in my sink for my water and vinegar bath. And while you're cleaning your greens, this is the perfect time to look and see if any are discolored. So that one is, so I'm not gonna use that. So I'm just gonna keep chopping away. You wanna watch your fingers because the knife is sharp. I grow collard greens, I'll tell you what. So I don't remember, this is 2021 right now. I can't remember if it was like December, January of 2018 or 19 or 17, but one year, it's customary to eat uh, greens for New Year's Day, but that December, that January, I couldn't find collard greens anywhere. I believe it was a collard green shortage in 2018 that made me say, I'm gonna grow greens in my garden every year because I never wanna miss out on greens because there's a shortage with the food processing system in America, right? So every fall, I grow my own collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, and they're absolutely delicious. They're so tender because I pick them young. I don't wait for my leaves to get as big as they do in the grocery store. This is my last bundle. This one I got from another store, it's not organic. So when I pick the leaves from, pick the plants from my garden, I actually leave this whole plant, this is the root that is in the ground. I just peel the leaves off the top and leave these stems there and more leaves grow. Like, it's totally awesome. If you like to eat, then you should look into growing some of your favorite vegetables. It saves you money, it's fun, it's good exercise working in the garden, like there's just so many benefits. And you know who made your food, who touched your food. You know what kind of water you use to water your food so you don't have all of those recalls. You know, there's always a recall on lettuce for E. coli, contaminated water. I believe some of these processing plants, they be washing their vegetables with dirty water. I really believe that. It's more comfortable in my mind to eat vegetables that I grow, but I'm not at that point yet of just um, eating 100% of what I grow, but my goal is to get there within the next couple of years. I would like to have a little farm or homestead, but I mean, I imagine if I grow my own vegetables, I know I'm going to give some and share with my family, but I can also sell to other people to help support the farm and keep it going. So 
Homestead Farm, something like that. Remember, I keep the little part of the stems because that doesn't bother me. I actually have a recipe I use of raw collard greens for a salad. I will definitely show you that recipe on this channel this summer. Pretty tasty and healthy. How should you get more raw, raw vegetables in your diet? Um, this dish, so for collard greens, it's gonna cook for several hours. They're not gonna be as green as they are right now. So this may not be the healthiest preparation for cooking them so long. So I definitely make sure I eat my greens in other ways as well as the soul food dish, right? To keep everything balanced. So now I'm just gonna put my last bit of greens in my bowl and give them a wash. So our greens have been soaking in water. So all I'm gonna do is lift them from the bowl with the water and vinegar that they've been in and kind of squeeze out some of that water and then place them in a clean bowl with clean water. And we're gonna do this process about three or four times. If I happen to see a bug, which I don't, but if I see a big leaf, then I'll just rip it in half. And so we'll let them sit in the new bowl of clean water for just a few minutes. So this is the water it was in. As we pour it out, let's see how much sand is in there. Not much, really. Look, it doesn't look that bad after all. So I'm okay, so now it's time to get our clean collard greens in the pot. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the macaroni that's already cooked. My eggs are already cooked. My potatoes are already cooked. And I just fished out the bay leaves that I use to um, season my smoked turkey. So I don't want those to be in the final dish with the collard greens. So I just fished those out. And now I have my clean collard greens that I'm gonna put in my pot that has been cooking for over an hour now with my smoked turkey leg. And I may have to put my greens in the pot in batches because I have so many. I really don't wanna to have to get two pots. So let's see. So I put in a couple of um, handfuls of greens. So let's add some seasoning now. Let's add some garlic powder. Some black pepper. Onion powder. Seasoning salt. I'll taste the greens for salt later on when it gets closer to being almost done. And a little bit of poultry seasoning. I like the flavor of this, so I add it. And now let's add some more greens in. So I'll let these cook down and then taste the broth since the smoked turkey is fully cooked. And the next step will be to get our macaroni going and then the potato salad. Is that everything? Oh, shoot, I forgot, we, we gotta do the ribs. So after this, I'll put the ribs in the Instant Pot, then we'll do the macaroni. Okay, let's season this layer. And this macaroni is cool, so I'll just move it out the way. So we're just gonna add more of the same seasonings. and let it continue to cook. At the end, I'll probably add a little bit of apple cider vinegar and I'll stir the seasonings in once it cooks down some. So for now, I'm just gonna put the top back on it and let that go. And then I'm gonna wipe off my stove. Another thing I wanna show you is you can see the green collard greens I just added. And the ones that have been in here cooking for about 20, 30 minutes, you can see how they've gotten darker already. 
So you can see the difference in how the green changes the longer it cooks. And these are actually gonna cook for a few hours. So food style, collard greens with smoked turkey leg. Okay, let's cut our onion for the Instant Pot. Whenever I cook meat, I always cook um, with onion. It just adds good flavor. Put my towel under my cutting board for stability. Cut both ends of my onion. This onion is gonna be in the pot for flavor and to release the onion juices. So again, I'm not gonna be obsessive about making sure each piece is cut exactly evenly. Just big chunks will do. Okay, so now let's put the pot in frame. And we're just going to put, I have my trivet on the inside of my Instant Pot so that nothing is exactly on the bottom. So we're gonna put in half the onion. Actually, I might cut um, another onion as well because I have a lot of ribs. So actually, I might cook half of them in the Instant Pot and then half of them um, just straight in the oven. So here are those onion slices. And next up is the meat and our cooking liquid. So here is our meat. This is 15 pounds of beef barbecue ribs, and it feels like 15 pounds when I lift it too. Now, for our liquid, we are going to add Dr. Pepper because I'm going to add Dr. Pepper to our barbecue sauce. And we're also going to add beer. So you want a strong beer or a dark beer. I usually like um, Jamaican Stripe, but I didn't see that. So this is India Pale Ale. Here's the um, box that came in. I bought it from Target this morning. A six pack cost me $10.99. It's a good flavor that I've always liked. So let's get some tongs. And I'm gonna add my liquid to the pan first because I don't want to pour, that wasn't smart at all. I don't want to pour my liquid over the meat and take the marinade off. But I'm not going to put this whole bottle in there. Or maybe I will actually. And then I'm going to add my beer. And so if you wanted to use plain water, you could. I would recommend you add a splash of apple cider vinegar or even use all apple cider vinegar. It just depends on how much you like. So I'm gonna put this whole beer in there too. So what is beer? 12 ounces or 16 ounces? Well, I know it's not a 40 ounce. I think it's a 12 ounce beer. Okay, so now let's add some meat. Uh, actually, I think I need to get the whole rack in here first. And take that out and I'm going to put the other whole rack. So this meat is going to take about 35 minutes in the Instant Pot or the pressure cooker of your choice. This Instant Pot is an electric pressure cooker, so it's not one that goes on the stove. don't want to overfill it so I'm just going to use a paper towel to clean off my rim and then I'm going to add the other half of my onion on top well top and middle so the flavors permeate throughout the meat the liquid intentionally doesn't come all the way to the top there's a line inside of the instant pot that tells you the max fill of liquid but I'm not even close to that and the next up we're going to make sure our lid is on sealing and not venting and then we're going to put it on 
I'm going to press pressure cook. Um, that's on 40 minutes, so I think I'm going to put it on 45 and just let it go. I'm going to pressure cook on high for 45 minutes. I had a total of 15 pounds, so these are the ribs that didn't make it into the Instant Pot. Yeah, I should have thought that through more carefully. So I guess I'm just gonna add onions to this big pan and I'm gonna cook these in this big pan. How about that, in the oven? Um, I'll start it off at 300 degrees and we'll do it for a few hours. Okay, so I tasted the collard greens and they do need more salt. It's a big pot of greens with a lot of um, liquid in it. So that's not surprising. I'll add a little bit more onion powder. And then after a few more minutes, we'll taste it again. I haven't added any vinegar. I'll do that later. Liquid smoke, smoked sea salt. Quite a few additives you can add to your greens. So now I'm going to go ahead and make my macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to turn, my macaroni has already cooked and it's cooled here and I've wiped off my stove a million times. But every time I sprinkle seasoning, it gets on the stove some more. But I'm going to start off at making my cheese sauce and my macaroni. So I'm going to use some um, evaporated milk. This is Carnation brand. This one is a store brand. I have um, several brands in my cabinet. I also have pet. But I'm just using them a base according to their um, expiration dates. So I have my... Can opener <laughs> and I cracked it on both sides so that's what I'm doing so I really don't have exact measurements one day I'll just do a separate macaroni and cheese video so that I can prepare it with exact measurements when you use the evaporated milk this isn't the sweetened condensed milk that you use for desserts this is evaporated milk you want to shake it well it even says it on the can shake well and then I open it on both sides. Some people open it with a knife, which is cool if you can do it, but I like having my can openers. So I'm gonna use one and a half cans of milk. And then next, I'm gonna add some cheese to it because the benefit of at making a cheese sauce in your macaroni is that with these elbow noodles, there are holes on each side of it. There are holes on each side of each noodle so that your creamy, cheesy sauce can get inside of the noodle. So when you're eating your macaroni, it's not just cheese on the outside, but also on the inside. So I grated my cheese on the other side. So I'm going to add a handful of mozzarella and a handful of New York sharp cheddar. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to add a lot more. So I'm going to go ahead and cover my collards and move uh, my cheese to this counter. Here's my grated cheese. So I started off with 32 ounces, 16 ounces of mozzarella, 16 ounces of New York sharp cheddar. I also have a 16 ounce piece of extra sharp cheddar and I have more if I need to use it. Um, I'm, I started off with four dry cups of dry macaroni. So I'm going to go ahead and add the other half. So this is two cups of evaporated milk. So I like to make my macaroni with a cheese sauce and then I also add in some dried shredded cheese to my baked macaroni dish. Again, with this, it's a million ways to make it, but this is my preferred way. So make it the way your family likes. That's the best I can tell you. I can tell you, this is the cheese that I like. I like sharp and smelly cheeses. When I go to a restaurant that's supposed to be like Southern cooking or soul food cooking, and they make baked macaroni and cheese, rarely do I like it because it seems like they often use mild cheese or Velveeta cheese. And that just doesn't cut it for me. I, I, I like the texture that Velveeta cheese gives it, but I also have to add in sharp. So I usually just don't bother with the mild cheeses. 
But again, it's cooked according to your preference. You could make a cheese sauce separately with uh, your milk and cheese, and I do that sometimes, but today I didn't, so I'm just gonna heat up my milk and cheese in the macaroni and let it do what it do. So you're just gonna cook this and stir it until your cheese melts, and you wanna add milk. If you start to notice that your milk cooks all the way out, you don't want the pan to scorch or dry out. So after that, we'll get our macaroni in the pan. We use 16 ounces of mozzarella, 16 ounces of New York sharp cheddar, and now 16 ounces of extra sharp cheddar. And when I grate my cheese, when I get towards the end, and it looks like if I grate any more, I'll grate my fingers, I don't even risk it. I just take the chunks and I break it up with my clean fingers. I wash my hands a gazillion times during the cooking process. And that's what I get. Um, clean towel. So I'll see if I need the other half. So that right there is eight ounces. If I need more, then I'll grate more. Here's the pan. Here is my pan of macaroni that I already cooked with the cheese sauce. Oh, 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 oh. We need to add butter. We need butter in the pan. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Here's butter, more butter in the pan. I'll rub it around a few places and then I'll mix it around the other places that didn't get it. But add butter or spray your pan. So I'm just gonna mix that butter in with this hot macaroni and cheese sauce. And this is why I got this big pan out because, ooh, it's a lot of macaroni and I haven't even added my milk in yet. So I'm gonna add in shredded cheese. So I still have a little bit of shredded cheese from this um, Tilma hook pack of cheese that was already shredded I used earlier this week. I think I used this for my um, cheesy jalapeno popper mushroom recipe that's on my channel that you can go look at. So in this macaroni, we already have two um, cans of evaporated milk. So now I'm gonna add some whole milk. Whole milk is a great addition because the additional fat 
in the milk will add additional flavor. So it's not a, a specific measurement or quantity of milk. I just want my macaroni to be a little bit loose and I want a little bit of the custard that bakes in a baked macaroni. So I don't want just macaroni noodles and cheese. There should be some looseness to it. And I think, you know, since this is a Sunday dinner video, a lot of people may not watch it. I'll make a, just a one specific video on how I make macaroni and cheese so that you can see it. So you can see how it's loosening up with the cheese and the noodles. That milk is gonna bake. Some people add egg, but um, half of the people in my family that are eating this are gonna eat it tomorrow, so on Monday. So having the extra fat and the looseness will help it to not be dry when they uh, reheat it tomorrow to eat it. So here's the thing with macaroni and cheese. It needs additional flavor. So the main ways people add additional flavor to macaroni and cheese, besides the milk and the cheese and the noodles and the salt and pepper, is to add mustard. So I'm going to use some dry mustard. You could also add a tablespoon of, oh, that was a bit much. You could also add a tablespoon of wet mustard. I'm also going to add black pepper. Now, some people also add a dollop of sour cream, and I would have did that, but I added a little extra mustard than I planned on, so I'm going to leave the sour cream out of this particular recipe. So it may not look cheesy, but you have to remember, we melted 32 ounces of cheese in the cheese sauce when it was in the pan, so it's plenty cheesy. So I'm going to go ahead and add the remainder remainder of this cheese and I'm gonna um, shred some more because my family likes it cheesy like I know some people don't like cheese in their macaroni so why are you making ma baked macaroni cheese right I don't get it but you know to each their own And this is a super large pan. So the typical pan is a 13 by nine pan. And this is a um, bacon dish that's much bigger than that. So I'm going to add more cheese. Yeah, I'm gonna use this. So I use three 16 ounce blocks of cheese. One was mozzarella, one was extra sharp cheddar, and one was New York sharp cheddar. I'm just breaking up the big chunks of cheese that wouldn't um, shred easily because it was so close to the grater. And I didn't want to grate my fingers. So I like having a little chunk of uh, cheese in my macaroni personally. And the ribs in the Instant Pot stop, so I need to get those in the oven and then check the other ribs that have been in the oven the whole time and see how they're doing. So I'm just going to smooth the grated cheese on top, make sure it mixed through a little bit. You'll notice the pan looks about halfway full, which is great. So when it cooks and bubbles up, it won't spill over and spill into my stove. I'm gonna add some pieces of chopped butter on top. That's going to ha help it brown, as well as add fat and flavor. Because remember, some people are eating it the day I cook it, but other people are gonna be eating it the, the day after. And so I don't want it to be dry for them either. So this fat will reheat and then add more, mo add more moisture. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna add um, a row of foil on top. And then we're gonna pop it in the oven. The oven has currently been on 300 um, for 
the ribs that are oven baking, but I'm, I think I'll bump it up to 350 for this macaroni. Okay, so next up, we're gonna doctor up our barbecue sauce. So I'm using store-bought barbecue sauce. I got two or three bottles of this to use if needed, but what we're gonna add is Dr. Pepper. So adding soda to your barbecue sauce, I added some to the Instant Pot when I cook the ribs, and adding soda, of course, it's gonna add sweetness and flavor. So I'm not gonna add the whole bottle, but I wanna add enough so that it can cook and reduce down and be extremely delicious on the ribs. So I'm gonna put these, uh, this bottle of barbecue sauce in the pot and see if I need to add another bottle. Yeah, I think I probably will. Actually, I have a couple of other bottles of barbecue sauce already open in my fridge that I've used in the last couple of weeks. So I think I'm gonna use those and then I'm gonna put the top back on this bottle and set it upside down on my counter so all the extra sauce can drain onto the bottom. Then I'll open this top over my pot and let the extra drop in because I wanna waste as little as possible. I don't like wasting food, y'all, because I have to pay money for this. So wasting food is wasting money. You don't want your fire to be too high on your stove because, of course, the barbecue sauce and the soda has sugar in it, so you don't want it to scorch or burn. And let me get a whisk. So we're gonna let the barbecue sauce cook down and then we'll add our ribs to our pan in the oven and add the sauce on top of the ribs. That's the plan. Okay, our potatoes and eggs are here to make potato salad. But before we do that, let's get our ribs that were in the Instant Pot. They cook for 45 minutes and then they've been on venting. Let's see if you can see, you can't, but it's been 58 minutes, minutes on venting. So it's nothing left to do. So let's open. Ooh, and add it on top of the ribs. And let them cook in the oven Ooh, for about another the hour. Oh, 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 oh! Man, that got on my clothes. Let me get another pair of tongs. So this is about to be a messy situation. I can see. That's what we're gonna do. I can see delicious. it already. But it is good to know that the ribs are fall off the bone tender. Look at that, y'all. Am I gonna make a mess? That touched me and it was hot and it fell off the bone. Ooh, frickety frack. Okay. So the ribs are out. So now I'm gonna get a spoon so that I can get some of the broth that it cooked in out of the Instant Pot and put it into my bacon dish. Since these ribs are gonna go in the oven and cook for a little while with some barbecue sauce. I'll grab a few of the onions that we cooked with as well. It smells amazing, y'all. So this was 45 minutes on high pressure, and then I just let it sit in the Instant Pot and naturally vent for 58 minutes, almost an hour. I didn't do that intentionally, I was just busy with other stuff cooking. But it is fall off the bone tender, I can say that for sure. And if you remember, this is the beer, as well as the Dr. Pepper and the broth, so it's yummy as well. Let me get me a paper plate, because I think I want to taste one of these. And then that way I'll know if I need to add more seasoning in the oven. So that's the chef's taste. This is our Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna pour a little bit. And of course I need to wipe off the side.
And then I'm gonna put it back on the stove to continue reducing down. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. So I'm gonna put some foil on top of this and pop it in my oven. And then last thing I have to do is make the potato salad. Ooh, and then I can finally rest. I tell you what, making Sunday dinner is not easy, especially when you're cooking for a lot of people. Okay, y'all, I am about tired, but the last thing I have to make is a potato salad. So I have my dill relish. You can use sweet relish. I add some mustard and I add some mayonnaise and I just need to cut my celery and my onions. So my hands are washed and clean. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I already diced up my potatoes. So I'm just gonna dice up my eggs and you can see that I, I diced these in my hand. Um, this isn't the safest way to do it. Go ahead and get your cutting board and chop up your eggs. I don't like my eggs completely smushed. I like them in chunks. So I'm making it the way that I like it. You can make yours the way that you like it. If you don't like eggs at all, you don't have to use them. I mentioned before that I don't use an actual recipe for my potato salad I never had I just do it based on sight and so for my eggs I typically use half as many eggs as I do potatoes so if I do 10 medium potatoes and I'll do five eggs but again that can vary it just depends on how big the potatoes are so so food isn't about precise measurement when it comes to things that aren't baked so If you hear the oven going, that's because the uh, ribs are still cooking. They're out of the Instant Pot. I like my potatoes to be chunky. And so they do look extra chunky um, when I dice them up initially because as you mix this with the mayonnaise and the relish and the vegetables and the mustard, these potatoes will break up. But I don't like my mashed, my, I do not like my potato salad to be the consistency of mashed potatoes. That's why I dice them up chunky initially so that when I mix it all up, it won't be complete mush. So I'm just gonna wash off my knife and get me a new plastic cutting board. This just came out the dishwasher. So my celery, I break the ends. You could use the leaves if you wanted to. I like to break it and peel it so you can get the stringy part off. Can you see that? A lot of people don't like the stringy part because that's what gets caught in your teeth. So if you just break it and peel it, you can see the stringy part comes off. I need to dry my hands off. And so I do one or two stalks of celery and I cut each piece into three or four pieces and then dice it kind of small. I don't want a big bite of celery but I do like the crunch that it gives and I need to get a towel under this cutting board let's do a clean kitchen towel okay so I'll do one more peel the stringy part off and then cut it long ways, three or four times. Don't worry about speed when you're cutting, just cut properly and the speed will come eventually with your experience. this in but I feel like I could use one more stalk of celery maybe let me add some of the leaves in I won't add the very end the leaves are of celery are very flavorful actually I'm just gonna cut off the ends that are a little bit discolored
So I'm gonna add my celery into my bowl. That looks pretty good actually. I'm gonna dice up the onion. I'm not gonna use the whole onion. I am gonna add a little bit of onion powder and gar garlic powder. I'm so tired, y'all. But I gotta get this food done. It's a total of 15 pounds of beef ribs. So once this day is over, I'm not gonna wanna see any more beef ribs for a while. They came out absolutely fall off the bone tender, which is wonderful. So I'm just gonna do a small dice for my onions. So this might have been a third of an onion. Take that piece off. Ideally, you'll do um, potato salad or pasta salad the night before, but I was too tired, so I didn't. But um, the salads really like having time to marinate with the mayonnaise and the mustard. Okay. So now I need a spoon. I'm gonna have so many dishes to wash tonight. Okay, so let's add some mustard. Mustard is I add one circle, two circles. I don't want to add a lot. I definitely add more mayonnaise than I do mustard. So I'll do a separate video with precise measurements um, for like my potato salad and my macaroni and cheese. Cause when I do the Sunday dinners, you don't really get to see everything in complete detail. So that's some mayonnaise. I don't know, a cup or two. And I need a bigger spoon. Because actually my family, some of my family is coming tomorrow, but some family, I'm going to go deliver this to them tonight. So I need to get it done so I can get back before it's dark. So I'm just going to toss my potatoes with all the other ingredients. And then I'll be able to decide if I need more of any other ingredient. And I can already tell I'm going to need more potato salad. I don't want it soupy. I mean, I'm going to have to add more mayonnaise. I don't want it soupy with mayonnaise, but I definitely do want it creamy. I need a bigger spoon. Um, and I think I've used them all today. How is that possible? Uh, maybe I'll use a butter knife. like I'm adding about a total of three or four cups of mayonnaise but you got to remember again this was five pounds of potatoes and we're still not done once we get this mixed in so you do want to make sure your mayonnaise is completely mixed and you don't want to see any pure mayonnaise just sitting anywhere Again, I'm just going by sight and feel of the texture. the texture of this mayonnaise so I'm gonna get me a little spoon just to taste for that effect I like it so now it's time to add seasoning
You must have seasoning in your potato salad or it's not real potato salad. I'm going to add onion powder. Black pepper. Sea salt. And a little bit of garlic powder. Definitely less garlic powder than onion powder. Let's mix again, and we're still not finished, y'all. When I tell, oh. A celery string. So get the seasoning mixed all the way in. And the last seasoning we need, can you guess what it is? Can you even see it? Okay, can you see it? We're adding some paprika. Paprika is not just for garnish, it is also for flavor. So we're gonna mix this up a bit. Then I'm going to give it another little taste with another little, and get a fork this time. That's good. I'm gonna add a little capful of Okay, I'm gonna add a little capful of apple cider vinegar with the mother. So that's a capful. Oh, shoot, I didn't even add our pickles. That's something that's missing. Okay, one more freaking spoon to taste. I'll tell you, the worst part about doing these videos is the dishes I have to wash afterwards, I promise you, but a taste. I feel like we can use a little bit more seasoning. So I'm adding more onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper. And I'm also gonna add more paprika and we'll be done. Sunday dinner is finished, finally. Southern style potato salad with smoked paprika on top.